You are watching Ballistic Coffee Boy. Hey guys, Ballistic Coffee Boy here. Welcome to BCB 109, where I'm going to be taking a look at the Atari Legacy Centipede Edition Home Arcade by Arcade One Up. So I can't wait to get to these games. This is such a cool console. I love this uh, cab. It's uh, it's just really good. Awesome animation there when you start it up. This came out in 2022 by Tastemakers, uh, aka Arcade One Up. Um, just looks amazing. I love the spin ball, 
um, trackball. Um, just really cool. The buttons are laid out perfectly in my opinion. But you'll see in a couple of the games I struggle to find how you start a couple of the games. But I love the volcano buttons. Uh, just, just freaking amazing. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take a look at all 14 of these classic Atari games. Get ready. So the first game we have here is Centipede, the uh, headlining game, as it were, for this cab. Uh, of course, these are all the arcade versions. Um, now keep in mind I'm playing this with one hand, holding the iPhone with my other hand, so I'm not doing the best right here, but I just want to show you some gameplay. Um, of course, these are replicated perfectly, no hiccups or anything. Um, I freaking love Centipede, it's such a great game. I have lots of memories, of course, playing this game uh, in arcades and uh, at Tilt or the arcade rooms at movie theaters for sure. Um, this game has really been um, in my life for at least 20 years, I feel like. It's always, you know, in a pizza parlor in the corner or one time my car broke down in East Dallas and I went to a barbecue restaurant and played this up waiting for um, the train to come but uh, <laughs> really really cool game lots of memories of playing this as a kid too just an amazing game I can tell why this was so popular and Millipede of course two of my favorites definitely a great reason to get this cab um, and um, it matches the border and everything on it and the art so really cool so the second game here is Crystal Castles this is one of my personal favorite games of course, I love the arcade versions of games more than anything. You can see my initials here because I've won in the past, and it's really cool they put your name there on the uh, puzzle. So this game, uh, lots of memories playing this as well at Putt-Putt and Safeway near where I used to live um, as a kid. And uh, I, you know, have gotten better over the years. Um, I think I've only gotten as far as the f maybe the second level maybe um so but uh really really cool game such a classic i love crystal castles um the 2600 version is really cool too um so but the arcade version just holds a special place for me um i love using the little trackball to play this game with i think that's called like a trackball xl they called it or something like that but um feels really great in the hand and all the controls operate really well really well on this cab the only problem I had, of course, in a couple of games later is I don't know kind of how to start the game. So you'll, you'll hear me banging on the button sometimes. But uh, this game, it's just, it's a piece of art. Uh, when I play this game, it, it, it's like playing a, I don't know, like an Andy Warhol print. I don't know. It's just, it's so well made and it, it's so iconic to me. Um, I definitely remember playing this at birthday parties at Putt-Putt when I was a kid and uh, getting more quarters and wanting to keep playing. It was so fun. Um, I love all the all the little different scenarios you have in this game, the different platforms, of course, the characters, Bentley Bear, icons, or I'm sorry, uh, Atari's biggest icon, really. Um, so, uh, but just such a great game. Uh, these characters are so lively too. Um, I don't know what they are. They're probably centipedes or, or trees. I don't even know, but uh, <laughs> Just a really fun game. Lots of memories of this one. And I'm so glad it's here on this cab because um, it is just such a classic Atari game. Um, and actually might deserve its own cab, for sure. Um, in my opinion, it's just as big a centipede. So um, I love these tunnels, of course, and these mazes. I think I get pretty far um, in the gameplay of this, playing with one hand, if you can believe it. Um, you don't really need to jump a whole lot in this game, so... Um, I think I get to a second level, maybe. I can't remember. But um, just such a cool game. Who doesn't love Crystal Castles? Uh, of course, Bentley Bear there was in um, Atari Karts for the Atari Jaguar later on. And an Atari Mania. <laughs> but uh, yes, just such a cool game. Love this game to pieces. Again, it's like a piece of art. It's just laid out so well. And the graphics in and of themselves are so iconic, you know, just kind of reminds me of Atari. So glad it's here. I'm going to put my initials in here with the trackball. 
Wow, I got seventh place, cool. As you can see, I have a first place up there. Just some hints for you there. Really cool game. Again, I'm so glad it's here. So this next game is Gravatar. Um, this is another Atari classic. Um, I never really got into this game as a kid. I thought it was too hard. Um, of course, playing here with one hand, it's even more hard, as you'll see. But um, such an iconic game. I actually like Gravatar Recharge more than this um, on the BCS. That's just me. But this game is just so iconic, of course, um, and great. Now I'm older, I can enjoy it more. Um, it's got different little play fields in it. You can visit planets. You get involved in a little shoot-off scene, just like this. And you, you do have a shield you can activate around you to bounce off things. Um, kind of like an Asteroids Deluxe. But um, such a cool game. Um, of course, as I said, now I'm older, I, I appreciate it more. When I was a kid, I just avoided it because it was hard for me for some reason. I'm not sure why. I'm talking, I was like seven, eight, you know, in tilt in the mall, you know, trying to play this game. And I just didn't know what was going on. But um, I do appreciate it. It's such a cool game. Um, different levels of play, of course. Um, lots of history. And, uh, of course, you have that space element going on from the 80s that seems so popular in so many games like asteroids probably made that um, really popular at the time but i just love this game <coughs> so let me know down below if you have any memories of playing gravatar i i think i saw this once in an airport when i was a kid and um we're going to visit my grandmother and i put a quarter in and i died immediately and of course, I, I'm not going to be able to land using one hand, so we're just going to go ahead and die. But um, really iconic game, and I am glad it's here. So the next game is Liberator. Now, from my understanding, this game um, was either never released or um, not popular. I think it, I think it was released, but not popular. So arcades converted these over to other things, but. For Atari, but um, really saddens me because I really like this game. Um, again, I'm playing this at one hand, so forgive me, but um, it's really good, um, and uh, it it kind of combines elements. Or someone said once it's kind of like Reverse Missile Command, or um, yeah, Reverse Missile Command, and I really like the gameplay mechanic that you have a guy in each corner and. You're, you, you have physical targets on the planet um, and you have things coming at you like UFOs and missiles and, and that part right there reminds me of Missile Command but um, just such a cool game it also reminds me of that movie War Games with Matthew Broderick in the 80s when it was out when I was a kid and uh, had lots of uh, fun times watching that on HBO too at different parties we had at our house me and my sister would have parties sometimes or she would, I was younger and would invite her friends over and we would watch uh, that movie. But uh, yeah, just such a cool game. I really like it. It kind of gives me the same feeling as Missile Command about the end of the world and uh, war games and all this stuff, space games and kind of all those lives in the balance. So I'm pretty much just gonna die here so um, we don't play forever, but and I'm playing with one hand. So definitely this is a two-hander for sure. I really like it though, and I never played this before until I played it in emulation a couple years ago, but uh, playing it on this arcade cab, it's just such a different experience, and I really like it. Um, yeah, I think this game might be on my Tempest regular arcade one-up machine upstairs, I think, I'm not sure, but cool game. So the next game is Lunar Lander. Now I know this is a popular game with a lot of older gamers. Um, Apparently, you would put quarters in for fuel, which is crazy. And so I can definitely see how this would eat up quarters. Um, now, this is one I kind of was trying to start. There you go. Um, and, of course, it's impossible to play with one hand, but I think I try. Um, I know this game is popular with, like, with, uh, like I said, with older gamers. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's not my cup of tea. Um now, when I can use both hands, I am actually, um, like, I can land and everything and, and maybe get to the second or third level. 
but it's just you know it's just kind of dull compared to today's standards and even a little bit later on asteroids at least has things going on and flying by and th this game it, you're, you're just basically parking is what you're doing uh and gravity is your enemy of course um but um there's the directional stuff at the top the wind speed or your your craft speed and all that and fuel so this game just kind of aggravates me i know it's a classic and i i am glad it's here so i can play it once in a while and i do it's just not when i go to so um of course i'm just drifting here trying to make something happen <laughs> uh, sorry guys yeah not my favorite game um I am glad though, I like the space theme of it, I am glad of what it brought to the gaming world. I know it was popular in arcades and uh, a lot of quarters got sucked into this one. Um, perhaps your grandparents even played it, I'm not sure, um, but it definitely has a cool history for sure, please go read about it. Um, but yeah, not one of my favorites, I'm <laughs> just kind of drifting here, I have no idea. I think I I let it just kind of fall and explode, but let me know if you have any memories of this game. I remember seeing uh, Lunar Lander in a barcade, I believe, um, in Los Angeles back in 2011 or 2010, and um, it hadn't been played in forever. It, I mean, the thing was, in, and it, it was in a really sad state. It was like, there was something wrong with the screen, so there were a couple of graphical glitches and it was really really loud and grumbly the the sound on it so um it was just really sad it had you know probably like pizza grease on it i mean it was just but you know definitely lots of history um with games like this whoa let me know if you have any history with this game a two mile crater so the next game on the second page is major havoc um and uh, this is an arcade game Atari put out that um, I I never really played before. Um, I think this might be on my Tempest Legacy upstairs as well from Arcade 1 Up. Now, playing with one hand, it's almost impossible. Destroy the fish robots. Hmm. Interesting. Um, but it's kind of sad, but I mean, playing with one hand, I don't even get to the second part of the game where you're, you know, running around the tunnels and jumping. But um, it is pretty cool, and I like how it's got that um, vector-based look going on, you know. Like, you might see this on the Vectrex or something. I really like that about it. This may have been back in the day whenever companies were making vector-style games. Now, I couldn't land this to save my life with one hand, so you're going to have to deal. But um, <clears throat> I do like this game. Um, I do. Um, <laughs> I like those vector graphics for sure. And look, I even scored 10th place. wasn't even trying, and that's sad. Let me know if you have any thoughts about this one. It's a cool game, but you do need both hands. So next up is Millipede. Now, this is one of my favorite arcade games. I love Millipede and Centipede, but I, I actually lo I like Millipede just a little bit more. Um, just because it's more fast, it's more kind of frantic, and they're the TNT bombs as well which i love um i could play this game all day i love millipede um it is a favorite of mine and um many others i know too just kind of love this game uh it takes everything about centipede and gives you a proper sequel it's probably one of my favorite old school sequels it just really improves upon that formula and um playing the rk game over the 5200 version that i Play that I, I think I play on new filter here in the near future on the vault one for the VCS but um, I, that version and the 2600 version I love it's it's actually fast and um, but I I mean you can't beat the arcade game this is just so good I love it I almost wish there was a like a millipede legacy cabinet because <laughs> that's one of my favorites but you know it's part of that franchise for sure so and centipede is kind of a big franchise it has games i think atari put out games on the ds for it like centipede infestation i think and some others over the years but 
just got such an iconic kind of kind of legacy. And Millipede is a fantastic sequel. I just love it. I love the sounds in this game too. I like to turn it up as loud as I can go and um, play. <laughs> a lot of fun. All right, let's move on to the next one. It's Missile Command. Now this is an iconic game. Of course, we all know Missile Command. It is just kind of the epitome of the 80s to me, this 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 game. I remember playing this in my Atari 2600 when I was seven years old, 1982, I believe. And um, I remember there was lightning outside or something. And all the lights were turned, like people were asleep. And I was in my room playing. And it was raining and thundering. And I remember just being seven. I remember just feeling creeped out. I think I'd seen like Apocalypse Now from behind the couch or something. My dad watched stuff on HBO and would get drunk. And I would just kind of watch from behind the couch. And I remember going to my room and playing this really low. And with the thunder outside, it just seemed like the world was ending. I, I remember um, shaking and... Uh, it was just really weird. I kind of tripped myself out, I, I guess. But I unplugged the VC, the Atari 2600 and ran into the living room and was like, acted like I had a bad dream. I was like, no, 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 and ran to my dad. I remember that so well. Um, I also remember my sister, my older sister, and I playing this game on the 2600 in my parents' living room because they, they put it in there after that so it wouldn't play and keep me up all night. But And they locked it up. But I remember us fighting over the... Atari controller and breaking one or two just like we did with Pac-Man and um, of course Santa brought us new controllers later on but or like my dad would just buy a new one but um, yeah this game is just so iconic to me and I've got it in so many places I've got this um, on my Nintendo system and I've got um, this in the Atari compilations over the years the flashbacks just everywhere the end just beautiful. That looks so sweet. And there I am. Just a fantastic cabinet. Let me know down below if you have any uh, thoughts about this one. I love it. It's chock full of classic Atari games. 14 games. Um, just about to go do the rest here in a sec. But um, let me know what you think down below. I'd love to hear it.
So the next game we're going to is Space Duel. Um, now I never uh, really played this a lot before. Um, it's it's a game that I don't think was around a lot. Um, it's definitely a take on Asteroids for sure. Um, I really enjoy it though now. Um, I, I think I only played it once um, in emulation maybe. Um, don't know a lot about it, to tell you the truth. I would love to dig into this game. But uh, playing it with one hand is definitely hard, so I think I'd just do what I normally do in Asteroids. My sister and I used to have this game where we would just fly in a straight line and shoot whatever and see how long we could last. So, of course, I didn't do that here, but I think I'd do it when I play Asteroids later. But um, I love the shapes in this game. Uh, it's just like a souped-up Asteroids. Um, I think they were trying to capitalize on the popularity of Asteroids for sure. Um and some even my may think of this as a sequel of sorts um but uh d definitely colorful uh, very much of its time um vector graphics of course multicolored little orbs and things and just really cool game it looks really nice um i wish it had a few more sounds but um it's just really um nice uh, I, I enjoy it um Definitely a piece of Atari history. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, definitely a game you got to use both hands to play, for sure. I don't remember seeing this game anywhere um, as a kid, so um, I wish I had, though. I'm sure there are people that have stories about playing this in the arcades, but none here. So let's move on to Super Breakout. This game I had on the 2600 uh, as a kid and um, it's a classic for sure. Now this is one I struggle with a little bit to get the game working. Um, like, I don't know exactly how you start it. I just kind of hit buttons until it starts and that's silly. But you have different options down here, of course. Um, I am kind of okay at Super Breakout. Um, of course, whenever I look down, that happens. Of course, it uses the, the spinner um, and um, I have to say it, it's a little sense on the sensitive side, but I feel like if it was stiff, that might be a problem too. So, um, on my, um, I actually have, um, a, uh, asteroids countercade and it's got this game on it from RK one up and that spinner actually is, it's pretty bad. Like you, you actually can use the buttons to, to move the, um, little paddle with two. So, but yeah, this is definitely a classic game. Um, it's, you know, of course it was kind of one of the big games for the 5200 as well. And uh, on my Atari XCGS computer, it actually comes built in to the system ROM on that. So whenever the keyboard is detached because it's a computer, but it's also a console, it was meant to compete with the NAS, believe it or not. But um, it's, uh, yeah, it's got this built into it. So it's kind of cool. Oh, wait, no, that's Missile Command. Sorry, got my games mixed up. <laughs> but um, I knew there was something wrong about that story. Yeah, that computer has Missile Command built in, not Breakout. But, um, yeah, just a fun game. I love when you get it to the top up there and you can do that. Just really rack up some points. Um, I like how the uh, noise or the sound changes depending on what color you hit a brick. I really like that. But just an iconic game. 297, not bad. So moving on here to the third page, Tempest. So Tempest I have a lot of history with. I played the hell out of this at Putt-Putt when I was a kid. I remember just playing this all the time at Putt-Putt for some reason. This and Qbert. Um, but this is a favorite cab of mine, of course, as you know. Um, I haven't reviewed it yet because I have a problem with it right now, but I have the Tempest Atari Legacy RK one up cabinet upstairs. It was one of the first ones I got, actually. Um, and I had nothing but problems with it. Um, I had no other problems with my RK one up cabs, just that one. They actually, you know, it's under warranty, so they sent me a new PCB board twice. That didn't resolve the issue. They sent me an, um, a unit for the, back, or for the back of it that I had to unscrew, and that didn't solve it. And then finally they sent me a new screen, which I haven't installed because I've got to take the whole thing apart to put it in. So, but I'm sure that'll solve the problem, but um, it just hasn't worked 
that well. So, but I love this game. Um, it's lively, it's colorful, it's fun, it's vector based, and um, of course I love Tempest 2000 and 4000 uh, as well. But this game, there's just something about it. It's it's classic, you know, it's classic Atari. Um, I love the look of this cab too, by itself, you know, um, the real cabinet. But just, I just love it. And of course, you have this the uh, Super Zapper that I just used there. You saw, but um, just a really cool game. I love Tempest. Um, I love the mechanic of using the spinner. Of course, you see here I'm using the button with the spinner with one hand. Look how far I'm getting with one hand. Um, just a really fun game. I really enjoy it. Um, lots of memories of. Uh, standing on a box or a stool to play this game as a kid I got third place what I do like about this too is it keeps all your scores so it saves it in memory um, you can see I've, I've got first and second place on this too by the way those are my names just typing an A and then my name wrong but a classic game I really enjoy it Love this intro screen right here. Just looked really cool. So moving on, we have Aka R. Now, this game, of course, Jeff Mentor redid this game recently for the Atari VCS. This is the original. And um, I think I don't think it was released by Atari. Um, it, they had, had said it tested poorly um, with beta testers. And... Um, you know, it's just kind of, it's slightly complicated. Um, just like Aka R in the VCS, you basically um, are um, changing color patterns when you shoot and you move the, uh, um, the, the trackball. And you, and you have to zoom in, of course, and go down below a level to kill people that invade. Um, it's just a, you know, it is a kind of complicated game, but it just looks amazing here. I love the different colors um, used in the game, um, and just an interesting game mechanic for sure. Um, this, of course, seems a little bit like Missile Command to me when you're aiming the little pointer, you know. Um, but it's like a piece of art, you know. It's it's like if a piece of art was an Atari game. It's kind of how, kind of how I think about this game. Um, definitely, um, it's cool to have the original. And uh, you know, I don't see why this wasn't released. I mean, yeah, it's a little difficult, but it's you know, it's just it's so colorful and and it is it is actually fun. So, um, just beautiful. Makes me wonder what other arcade games out there never made it that we might not even know about, you know. Um, I'm, sh I'm sure that some stuff was destroyed, you know, or you know, misplaced. But um, there were lots of Atari games that never made it out. Um, arcade games. And um, it's just a shame, you know. Uh, this is such a well-made game, for sure. You could tell a lot of love went into it. And I always wonder what would happen if it was out. Would it, you know... Would it ever be able to reach the height of something like Asteroids? Probably not, but um, it's just beautiful. It's one of those games you have to play it a few times to kind of get the hang of it. Um, when it says zoom, you have to hit one of the um, white buttons on this cab, um, whatever button that is, <laughs> to zoom in. And you actually um, get into like a closer battle with these these enemies here um, oh yes and I also have this on my um, my uh, Tempest art um, Atari legacy cabinet upstairs so it was out on a few of these so I've got this in two places really but it's fun to play on this larger 3-4 um, scale cabinet I actually like the volcano buttons there you can see them glowing some of the shots those are really nice touch this cabinet did not have the light up coin door as some of the newer ones have this this came out right before that happened so it does have a uh, molded coin door on the front but the but, but it's not lit up so 
I wanted to take this time to also say the screen, as my friends the Fulton Brothers said on uh, their YouTube channel and in the vertical blank, the screen is a little washed out, um, and you can probably see it here. Um, that's my only complaint about this cab. I wish the screen was a little better. Um, it can have, it, it's not odd viewing angles. It, it just kind of, it, it can definitely be a higher quality screen. So that's my only complaint about this cabinet. Um, everything else is fantastic. I like the side art. I like the, how the buttons are laid out. I like the graphics, I like the marquee. It just looks really, really great. So, and the side art, of course, but, um, for millennium, the Atarian Federation has brought peace to the galaxy. You must be the Sentinel. Interesting game for sure. As I said, like a piece of art. Okay, moving on here. We're going on to Asteroids. Of course, this is um, the arcade hit that we all know and love. Um, on the 2600 version, when I played that as a kid, that's the first version of Asteroids I ever played. And I actually thought, whenever I saw this in the arcades, I thought this was like subpar as a kid because the Asteroids weren't colored like on the 2600. So, um, but I do remember seeing it in arcades after that. I, I remember actually being in a, in a uh, tilt in Northeast Mall in Hearst, Texas, and um, playing this with a friend of mine and um, as a little kid. And uh, it was fun. We actually, you know, the, the other older kids playing, and, and there was actually a line for it. That's how long ago this was. Um, so it was still kind of popular in maybe 82 or so. And um, I was there with an the older friend, and um, it was just so fun to watch these grown people fighting over who was going to play next and whose quarter was whose and uh you know um but um i love this game it's just a piece of atari history to me that you know um just really stands the test of time so the last game now is asteroids deluxe um this game of course adds a few bells and whistles um, Atari trying to capitalize on the popularity of Asteroids for sure, but um, I do prefer this over the original, the arcade version. Um, it's it's just more fun. Now here I'm just gonna go by and shoot. As you can see, this is what you know, my sister used to do as kids, but um, it is a just a piece of Atari history, like all these other games. This cabinet has 14 really really great. Um, Atari classic RK games and I highly recommend it even with the washed out screen a little bit um, I think the cab as a whole stands up to that and so I still have to give this cab a high score um, the games on it are just great um, and uh, my favorites of course being Crystal Castle, Centipede, Millipede um, I, I actually like Breakout as well um, having Asteroids here, both versions, is also amazing. I have this on my Asteroids Countercade also, um, as well. Asteroids and Asteroids Deluxe, but, um, which I'll review later. But just such a great cabinet. Um, I love everything about it. The volcano buttons, to the light-up marquee, to the fantastic side panel artwork, uh... To the, just got some great touches um, the molded coin door and of course the Atari logo on the riser um, so would I recommend this cab? yes, I recommend it to Atari fans and arcade fans um, to your average gamer maybe not, um, if you are um, a fan of Atari's games and classic arcade games, I definitely think this is a must buy um, let me think down below um, let me know what you think um, and I would love to hear it and yeah, let me know what you think about this cabinet. It definitely has to get an A plus for me. It's fantastic. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.
You are watching Ballistic Coffee Boy.